Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a romance mystery film, Fortuna's Eye. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a young boy standing up after a plane crash. The boy looks at the accident's aftermath and finds two young girls whose body parts are transparent to him. The youngest girl calls him for help when debris suddenly falls onto her. The scene then fast forwards to 20 years later with a car detailer named Kiyama. Kiyama's boss calls him into the office, where he assigns Kiyama as a manager at their new branch store. This shocks Kiyama as he doesn't think he deserves it, but his boss tells him to think about it before answering a business call. Kiyama then returns to the shop. However, Kiyama finds the card he's polishing with scratches, and his co-worker laughs after seeing his reaction. Kiyama calmly confronts his co-worker, who denies damaging the vehicle and even insults him for being the boss's favorite. The co-worker shoves him aside, causing Kiyama to fall on his bottom, breaking his old phone. Later that day, the boss's wife argues whether Kiyama is suitable for the manager position, as the co-worker is as talented as Kiyama. Later, Kiyama heads to a repair shop, where he meets a lively girl named Cutie. Cutie smiles as she helps repair Kiyama with his broken phone. Kiyama doesn't know how to use the modern smartphones and the new models, so Cutie charges him for free. While on the train to work the following day, Kiyama spots the passenger's hand beside him being transparent. This freaks him out, but he doesn't say anything and goes to work. After his shift, Kiyama heads to the repair shop, but he doesn't come in as he doesn't see Cutie. As he walks away, Kiyama accidentally bumps into a guy whose head is transparent to him. Although confused and freaked out, Kiyama follows the guy discreetly when a car suddenly runs the guy over, immediately killing him. Kiyama stands there with the other onlookers, having mixed emotions about what just happened. The following day, the boss's wife brings up the car accident last night, saying that people never really know other people's fate. Kiyama asks her what she would do if she knew other people's fate, knowing when they were about to die, to be exact. The boss's wife responds that she doesn't want to know that, as it creeps her out, to which Kiyama fakely agrees. Kiyama checks his phone screen, which blackens and turns static before shutting down, implying that he might need to get a new phone. Later that day, Yeon returns to the repair shop and goes to Cutie, who offers him help in choosing a new phone. Cutie lays her hands to take Kiyama's old phone and retrieve the memory and data in it. However, her hands and arms appear transparent to him, scaring Kiyama as he knows what it means. Kiyama thinks that the people he has seen that are transparent in the past are bound to die soon in some type of way. He suspects Cutie will meet an unfortunate fate soon. Kiyama tries to act normal, before firmly asking Cutie to give 30 minutes of her time after work, probably to stall some time for Cutie as he doesn't know what will happen next. Although confused, Cutie agrees to meet him at the coffee shop in front of the shop. Hours later, Cutie goes to the coffee shop to meet Kiyama, who's pleasantly shocked that Cutie's hands are back to normal. Cutie asks him why he wants to meet her after work, and Kiyama reluctantly tells her that he can see people's fate and had just saved a person's life. This makes Cutie suspicious, so she asks Kiyama if it's her life he has just saved. Kiyama doesn't answer her question and apologizes for wasting her time before walking out of the coffee shop. However, he suddenly feels excruciating pain in his chest with a ringing in his ears that he can't breathe. Fortunately, the pain goes away seconds later. Kiyama heads to the boss's office the following day and accepts the manager position. As Kiyama manages the new branch, the boss's wife cannot help but be nosy as she notices Kiyama smiling while working. Despite Kiyama's denial, she knows that he has found a girl he likes. One night, Kuni surprises Kiyama while he's working and gives her gratitude for saving her life. Kuni shows him a newspaper, showing the night they met at the cafe, a factory building she always passes by had blown up. The time it exploded is usually the time she walks past through it, indicating she would have been in the accident if it weren't for him. Kiyama tries to blame it on coincidence, but Cutie insists that he saved her life. The following day, the boss's wife catches Kiyama in the act, when he unknowingly admits that he had a woman visiting him last night. Kiyama changes the subject after that mistake and asks the boss's wife if she agrees that people's fates are already decided. Although confused by that, the boss's wife disagrees with such a thing. She adds that people make 9,000 different choices daily, meaning that everything is not based on fate. Later that day, Kiyama cannot help but reminisce about an old friend, Mariko, a girl who used to work with him and had feelings for him. However, when Kiyama failed to notice her feelings, Mariko entangled herself with a wealthy customer, and Kiyama just let it happen. Kiyama pushed her away, so Mariko got tired of pushing herself to someone who didn't care about her enough to reciprocate her feelings. The following day, a heated argument between the co-worker and the boss ensues. 
It turns out, someone used a customer's car without permission, and the customer had seen the co-worker driving his vehicle near the station with a woman. The customer has reported it to the boss, and despite the evidence against him, the co-worker firmly denies the accusation. So the boss fires him, and an enraged co-worker threatens to sue his boss for unfair dismissal. However, the boss cannot be bothered by that, so when the co-worker sees Kiyama, he throws a tool at Kiyama, who fortunately dodges it. This pisses off the boss even more, so he punches the co-worker and yells at him to leave his shop. As the co-worker leaves silently, full of hate and rage, Kiyama is shocked to see the boss's hands getting transparent. Later that day, Kiyama invites the boss to eat outside with him, which the boss gladly accepts. While walking on the streets, Kiyama cannot help but notice that the boss's body is getting more transparent. He also wanders his eyes around, like waiting for something or someone to come out that could harm the boss. Truth be told, the co-worker suddenly comes out of nowhere. He screams as he attacks the boss with his bat, but Kiyama quickly covers the boss with his body. The boss angrily charges at the co-worker, who's shocked by the turn of events. Meanwhile, Kiyama sees the boss's hands have turned back to normal when he suddenly feels that pain in his chest. Only now, it's more painful that he loses consciousness. Kiyama wakes up in the hospital with the boss's wife at the bedside. She informs Kiyama that they have decided not to sue the co-worker for now, and the doctor has advised him to rest for at least a day. The following day, Kiyama gets consulted by a cardiology doctor. While waiting for the examination's results, Kiyama tries to save a little girl's life after seeing her arms being transparent. However, the doctor stops him and reveals that he also saw the girl being transparent. The doctor takes him to the rooftop and informs Kiyama that they have Fortuna's eye, an ability to see and know when people will die through their bodies. Fortuna is the goddess of fortune in Roman mythology, and often, the people gifted with this ability try to mess with other people's fate. However, they will have to pay the price. The doctor warns Kiyama not to interfere with other people's fates and stop saving their lives, as he might regret it in the end. The following night, Kiyama goes to the repair shop to see Cutie. However, since she's still on her shift, Cutie writes to him to meet her at the coffee shop after work hours. Hours later, Cutie meets him at the coffee shop, where Kiyama asks her to go out with him. Kiyama quickly notices that he has asked the question loudly, so Cutie tells him to leave with her. As they go outside, Kiyama apologizes for embarrassing her in public. However, Cutie responds that she's not embarrassed and doesn't want the people in the coffee shop to hear her answer. Cutie then gladly agrees to go out with him, making Kiyama happy. Soon enough, they start dating and spending time with each other every day. One day while working, the co-worker confronts Kiyama, who is now a manager at their branch, about talking to their head boss about hiring the co-worker again as a car detailer in his branch. However, Kiyama simply replies that of the 9,000 choices he made that day, hiring the co-worker was one of the good choices, confusing him. The following day while on a picnic date, Cutie shares her struggles with being not a morning person but having a morning shift. They both see a happy family in front of them, which brings back memories to Kiyama. He shares with Cutie how having his parents die in the plane crash and being its sole survivor. Since then, he questioned himself why he was able to live. Cutie responds that he was given a chance in life so he could be happy, get married, and have kids. Cutie tells him with a smile that they will live the future together. Kiyama ends the date by sending Cutie home, and he purchases beautiful engagement rings the following day. Just a few steps out of the shop, Kiyama feels that pain in his chest again, so he returns to the hospital to get examined. The doctor informs him that he will most likely experience heart attacks as his coronary artery is contracting. The doctor adds that whenever he saves someone's life, his own body comes close to death. It may be a mechanism to prevent destroying the balance of life. He also cannot see himself getting transparent, so the doctor advises him to be careful of his choices. While working, a customer parks his red Ferrari, and when the man comes out, Kiyama recognizes him as Tycoon, the guy Mariko dated after him. Kiyama kindly asks Tycoon about Mariko, who is now working at brothel. It turns out, Tycoon left her there after using Mariko. Tycoon notices Kiyama's reaction to his words, so he starts taunting Kiyama by insulting Mariko. Out of nowhere, the co-worker suddenly attacks Tycoon and asks him to stop disrespecting his boss. Tycoon firmly tells him to let him go, but the co-worker refuses to listen to him. However, when Kiyama calls his name, he lets go of Tycoon. Later that day, Kiyama cannot help but blame himself for Mariko's unfortunate fate. The boss's wife agrees with him, but also points out that Mariko chose that life. The boss's wife then shares how Tycoon gets on her nerves and wishes him a divine punishment. The following day, Tycoon returns to the branch to get his car for a sexy drive with a sexy girl. Kiyama gives him the keys when he sees Tycoon's hands being transparent. 
Although shocked, Kiyelan doesn't say anything as he must not interfere with other people's fate again. The next scene then shows Kiyama and his boss at Tycoon's funeral. It turns out, Tycoon had fallen asleep while driving, and Kiyama cannot help but blame himself for not saving his life. Later that day, Cutie goes to Kiyama's apartment to comfort him. Kiyama blames himself for not being able to save Tycoon and the little girl from the plane crash. Cutie points out that he saved her life. However, Kiyama snaps at her out of nowhere, and in response, Cutie calls him weak before leaving. The following day, while on the train to work, Kiyama is shocked to see all the passengers being transparent. He gets off and stays on a bench at a park, only to be terrified as he sees all the kids from a school being transparent too. The school staff take the kids away from him when Kiyama touches them as he's too bothered by what he just saw. Kiyama then spots a school flyer, announcing a parent-child outing on the Ashiyama farm. Kiyama suddenly gets a bad feeling, so he goes to the train station, only to see all the passengers going to Ashiyama station are transparent. As the train leaves the station, Kiyama sees the time, one of the times indicated on the flyer, and the same time Cutie goes to work. Later that day, Kiyama stops by Cutie's place and apologizes for his behavior the last time they talked. However, he's shocked when Kibi says sorry and claims she was talking about herself when she called Kiyama weak. Silence envelopes the room as both of them don't know what to say anymore. But Cutie breaks the silence and goes to the fridge to make food. However, Kiyama suddenly sees her hand getting transparent, but instead of saying something, Kiyama grabs her and tongue massages her on the lips. He breaks the kiss but not his tongue and says to Cutie that he'll always protect her no matter what happens. The following day, Kiyama asks Kyuubi on a vacation trip to another city. Although it's sudden, Kyuubi agrees to come with him tomorrow. Later that day, Kiyama calls the nursery school and pretends to be one of the parents of the students. He asks if the parent-child outing can be moved, but when the school refuses as it inconveniences the other parents, Kiyama snaps. The school then realizes he is the same guy from the park the last time. Kiyama doesn't answer and immediately drops the call. After that, Kiyoma goes to the hospital and asks the doctor if his hands are transparent since he cannot see his own fate for himself. However, the doctor firmly refuses to tell them what he sees as he doesn't want to break the balance of life. Kiyama goes to the branch shop and tells the co-worker that he's in charge of managing and delivering tomorrow as he's going on a trip with Cutie. He also informs the boss and his wife about the trip and even gives them gifts. Later that night, Kiyama stands outside Cutie's apartment building and tosses the engagement rings as he accepts his fate. Tomorrow, he will leave Cutie after saving her one last time. Kiyama writes a heartfelt letter to Cutie the following day, apologizing for lying about the trip. On the other side, Cutie is at the train station with the same kids Yama had seen being transparent. She texts Kiyama, apologizing for not being able to go on the trip with him, as the girl who's supposed to cover her shift is sick. This alarms Kiyama, as this means that Cutie will catch the 7.30 train, which is the same time on the flyer for the school outing. He immediately leaves his place, only to be stopped by the police, who are there to interrogate him regarding the call he made to the nursery school yesterday. However, Kiyama runs away in haste. Fortunately, Kiyama manages to hide from them. Once they're out of sight, Kiyama runs to the train station, hoping to catch the train to Ashiyama. Kiyama indeed catches the train, but then he's a little bit too late as the doors have already closed. Fear is evident on Cutie's face as she sees the terrified Kiyama. Kiyama promptly runs again and escapes the same police. He gets inside a cab and tells the driver to drive to the following two stations. Fortunately, there's no traffic, so Kiyama arrives quickly at the two stations ahead. He sees Cutie's train arriving at the station, where there is an ongoing construction of a building near it. Kiyama realizes that the building or the construction vehicles might fall on the train once it reaches the station, as it's not yet finished. So he lights a thermal flare as the police has followed him there. Kiyama runs into the train rail, sacrificing himself to save the passengers and Cutie. The train conductor steps on the brake after seeing the man on the rail, shaking the ground in the process, causing the construction vehicle and equipment to fall as the train stops. Cutie quickly gets out and runs to Kiyama, who fortunately survived the shaking and falling debris. But even so, his action still has a great consequence. Cutie embraces him tightly as she sobs. Kiyama remains kneeling on the ground, unmoved as his life is taken from him from interfering with other people's fate. His heart is in exchange for everyone else's life, including the girl he truly loves. The next scene shows the boss's wife telling Cutie how Kiyama started smiling after meeting her. Both women wear formal black dresses to grieve Kiyama, who died of a heart attack. Later that day, the next scene shows that Cutie is also gifted with Fortuna's eye. It turns out, she's the exact little girl from the plane crash that Kiyama believed he couldn't save before. 
This means that Kiyama has not only saved Cutie once or twice, but his last moments the third time to save her because of his love for her. Kiyama was not the only survivor and the only one who got Fortuna's eye after that plane crash. Cutie knew from the second moment they met that Kiyama was the one for her. She hides the truth from him, hoping to save his life. That night, when Kiyama kissed her, Cutie saw that Kiyama had already turned transparent. But she didn't know things would turn out this way. The film ends with Cutie finding the letter and their engagement rings from Kiyama. A flashback reveals Kiyama holding onto the rings because of the immense love he has for Cutie. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.